Dearly beloved, we appreciate God for every opportunity that he gives us as his children because he loves us. He cares about us. And so every time we meet and share and talk about his word that encourages us, it's a pleasure. And so we pray. Father God in heaven, we appreciate you for the good that you do to us and for us. We pray the Lord you bless our time together as we meditate on this word. And may we be comforted, may we be encouraged to live for another day, to live for another moment, and living it not just for us, but for you and for other people. Pray that we bless our time together in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, God is good that actually he gives us time, that we still breathe, we still walk, that our heart is still beating, and we are still alive in this land of the living. And so we appreciate him for every moment that he gives us. We are living in times where we need encouragement. We are living in times where we need to move together. We are living in times when many, many things are going amiss. But now listen to this, that actually we're going to share about the person and the personality that are going to, to talk about, to think about, to pray about and meditate about is the person, the name Nehemiah. Nehemiah is a name of a person. Nehemiah exists in the Bible. He was one of the biblical figures. He is one of the key people that stood out during his time, the time uh, when they were in exile. He is a person who stood out during his time and therefore he is written about. The Bible writes about him. And in these portions of scripture that we're going to read, he has a book bearing his name. And the name is Nehemiah. And just like another Hebrew name, just like another biblical name, Nehemiah name has a meaning. And the meaning in the Hebrew, the original Hebrew means God comforts or rather comforted by Jehovah. And so I, when I read about it and when I think about it and when you pick the Bible to read Nehemiah, just know that actually it is about God comforting comforted, comforted by Jehovah. And so this book stands out for me also, just like other biblical figures, Nehemiah also stands out. And it's my prayer that you and I will pick something that will encourage you, that will energize you, that will revive you to be a person of impact. How was Nehemiah a person of impact during his time in the king's palace where he was serving and among the people of Israel that um, his heart went to because he also belonged to them and even, I mean, everybody around him, a person of impact. And it's our desire that our world will be a better place to live in. Our church will be a better place to pray in. Our families will be a better place to stay in. And the spirit is what I'm praying for. And so in his book, I just want to read opening verses just like we have always done. And they will set pace for us. There will be a basis for our engagement. And so the Bible says in Nehemiah 1, that the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it happened in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year, as I was in Susa, the citadel, that Hanan, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile and concerning Jerusalem. So he asks them, how is home? How are our people there? And in verse three, that they reported back to him and said, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame, trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by the fire. So they gave him a report of what was, how home was his city, Jerusalem. And in verse four, this is where the matter is. And he said, as soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And in verse five, he prays, the prayer is made and which I'm not going to read entirely. But he begins his prayer this way in verse 5. And he said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep 
his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes be open to hear the prayer that your servant I'm now praying before you today. And so Nehemiah does pray. But this sets us the context about the man, Nehemiah. He is in Persia. He is in exile. But in a very privileged position. Because when you read, you go ahead, you'll find that after Nehemiah was serving in the king's palace. And he was in a privileged position of a cup bearer. Someone who was very close to the king of the nation. There was someone who was serving the king, direct holding his cup. When you hear a cup bearer, someone who bears the cup of the king for his uh, survival, for his well-being, well for his welfare, Nehemiah, bringing him wine, bringing him food. So he was all the time there. So it was a very, very privileged position. But listen. He was there, but his heart was not just content in the luxury in the king's palace, but his heart was also back home with his people. The reason why when these people came, he asked them, why is home? Why is Jerusalem? And they give him a report that the walls are broken down. The people are in agony. The people are in shame. The people are in trouble. And so because of the news that he had, the Bible says it all wrote itself on his face. He wept, he cried. And Nehemiah um, had to carry on. He didn't panic, he didn't hurry with what, but he kept it in his heart. Something that I treasured very, very much. He received the news. Yes, he did. He kept it with himself. And until there was an opportune time before King Atakazakizes, of Persia at that time and 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 and, and he, he powered out his heart. And so as a couple bearer, a very privileged position in the king's palace, he had a close contact with the king. And he was recognized, he was among the recognized leaders that were living in exile at that time. And so Nehemiah, a man of respect, was close and a confidant to the king. He had close contact and therefore he wanted to use those contacts he wanted to use that closeness to this higher with the high authority he was filled with sadness yes when he had the news and when he appeared an opportunity came for him to appear before the king he proved to the king that something was not right in his heart. But all the time, he had been a jolly man, happy. You know, this one teaches me something, that when, when situations arise and your personality is a jolly personality, you are an outgoing personality, you are able to show. People can be able to read your moods. And then this time, he is not well. This time, he is well. Now, Nehemiah, because all the time he was a person who all over and serving the king happily, but when there was trouble, the king was able to interpret from his face. Wearing a sad face and because of the troubles that had been home. And so, he continued his story. And so when time is permitting for you to be happy, be happy, be jolly, and let people know a little bit about you. There, will be, there, can, there can come a moment when your personality can contribute something. Nehemiah's personality contributed something to the welfare of the people of Israel. Listen to me. The king looked at him when he took the wine. And the king said, Nehemiah, this is not you that I know. And we pray the Lord that actually the king was able to not sit by himself. And this brought the fruit to the people of Israel, to the wall that had been broken down, to the wall that had been burnt with a fire. And so he was given permission. And so when there is time to work well with your leaders, with your bosses, do it. Because actually it will, it will work very, very, very nicely when an appropriate time comes. And I've learned from Nehemiah that actually because of his good workings, 
with the king, the leader. He had not misappropriated his time. Many, many people misappropriate their time before their leaders. And things don't go right. But when you are in one accord with those that supervise you, as long as there's an opportunity with those that supervise you, please do it. So that actually that code your working relationship will work at a time when you need it most. Nehemiah needed it most for the uh, for his people and it worked here. So he was given permission. You read on Nehemiah, just a few chapters there. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, he was given permission. He was given letters to go. First of all, permitted, go. And then given letters of introduction, go. And not just letters of introduction. The Bible said that the king gave him escorts. Escorts to, for his security. And therefore Nehemiah was commissioned to go. And build, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And so all was done because of his earlier good working relationship, cordial with the authority that was. And so he reached Jerusalem after all is done. He passed through the kingdoms because the king gave him the letters go. And he went and the letters enabled him really to reach out for timber, for labor, for other resources. But I am grateful to God that this book is written here for us to learn something that in everything that we do, one, you do it for your own good, but also you do it for others. Others to benefit from your good relationship with others. I value it very, very much. And so he gathered the people, one attribute that he did. He gathered the people and they began to work on the wall. Read this book, chapters one, two, three, and continue on. He gathered the people and they started the work. Now, one thing that comes out about Nehemiah is that actually he did great research. Not about the problem. Diagnose properly the problem. And then start on the right footing. Nehemiah knew where to start. He knew where to go. He knew how to do it. He knew when to do it. Even while he was still in the palace of the king in Persia, he knew he didn't panic. He didn't hurry. He didn't become, you know, he was not overtaken by feelings, by emotions, but he controlled himself, which is a virtue, really. Which is a virtue, really. And so we pray that God, who enabled Nehemiah to do great things because of his own personality that he had handled very well before the king, because of his good working relationships that he had maintained with the king, he was able to get back home and help his people. And so I appeal that as we learn about Nehemiah, whose name means God comforts or comforted by Jehovah, comforted by God, I pray that God will enable you, whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever you are. I've used all those so that actually remain relevant to the people, but also remain relevant to yourself. Now, Nehemiah, one of the things that I want, I want to dive in now very, very quickly to, to streamline the way, the way they are, the lessons directly that we pick, one of them is that Nehemiah had unshaken belief in the sovereign God. You see, he was over there. Although his parents were Jewish, but he was in a foreign land, thankfully, he was in a privileged position. And when he was in a privileged position, his mind was back home in Jerusalem. He kept thinking about them. And an appropriate time came, he was able to, uh, to get the news. And so he had an unshakable faith, and unshakable belief in God. And because of that, he availed himself to be used of God. There are some people who get privileged positions and they forget their inheritance. They forget their heritage. Nehemiah never forgot. Even when he was in the state house, even when he was in that position, he never forgot that he belongs, to, among, to, he belongs among the Jews. He never forgot his God. Even when things had gone wrong, but he knew that actually God was still. So he availed himself. And so I appeal for us 
wherever we are, shall we avail ourselves for God's work, particularly for our people, for your church, for your nation, avail your time, avail yourself. Nehemiah proves to us that even when he was well off the other side, but he availed himself to be used of God, he was available in this grand scheme of God's divine purpose, and he came out, he left the comfort of the kingdom, he left the comfort of the palace, and walked, traveled long distance to get back and help his people. So therefore we need to set our focus. Please set your focus on the Lord God. And it has appealed to me to set my focus to the Lord my God. And in every bit of my work, may I involve God. May you involve God. Where are you? Who are you? And what are you? Involve God in all your work. And so, when he went back in chapter 2, verse 17, when he gathered the people, he asked them a question. And the question was so compelling. And he said to them, in verse 7, chapter 2, verse 17, he said to them, You see the trouble we are in? How Jerusalem lies in the ruins with its gates burned? Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer derision. And I told them of the hand of my God. So he continues. So pray the Lord, pray the Lord. The Lord Nehemiah leaves us a lesson here. Trouble may be there. Breakage may be there. Turmoil may be there. But we need someone who will lead constructions, renovations, rehabilitations, revivals, renewals, be it in the spiritual circles or in the physical, but we need someone who will arise. So pray fervently to God that God will give us, will give you strength. He gave Nehemiah, may he give you the strength to do something for your people. Don't leave them suffer there. Get back to your villages and support them. I appreciate people that have gone back to their homes. They are in the cities, they are in towns, they are overseas, but they remember to repatriate, to, I mean, to, to well, you to bring back, to plow back some things to help in the villages, build a school, build a hospital, build a dispensary, build, you know, make a well for water. Nehemiah, remember to go back. Now I pray to you. Actually, we can have so many lessons about Nehemiah, but one of them, this one here is critical that we need to get back and support our people back home. Those of you who are children and the parents are there in the village or wherever, support them. Get back. Your heart go there. And so one other thing that I actually learn as I, as I get away from that point, but a very, very critical one, is that I actually endeavor to overcome all the discouragements and the discouragers. Listen to me. That Nehemiah began the work, but there were discouragements all over the place. There were discouragers all over the place. But he insisted to continue working. The Bible talks about some names here that are mentioned, Tobias, Sanibalat. Those are the people that actually came and they, they shouted at Nehemiah what he was doing. And the people will shout in your ears. That's chapter 4, verse 1. And now when Sanibalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged. And he, he jeered at the Jews. Can you listen? Can you hear that? And of course, actually, we, cannot, we cannot avoid such characters in the society. They are there, there. And I am learning that these characters are there. Even during our time, they are there. During the Hamas time, they were there. And, but for him, he insisted and continued building the temple, rebuilding. So you need to, to stand your ground it's a constant reminder on us or to us that never give up. As long as it's a just cause, God has mandated it, God has mandated you to do it, never give up. Never, never, never give up. Be an encourager. Nehemiah himself was an encourager here. When you read this chapter 4, they plotted many things. They came and they wanted to fight them, as the Bible says here. And in verse 9 of chapter 4, he said, And we prayed to our God and set a good and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. 
day and night. Praise the Lord. Day and night. So here we are. I am reading this. I am doing this. Maybe to encourage somebody. Who might have started good work, but is getting discouraged because of what's happening around them. Is it in your family? Is it at your workplace? As long as you are in our accord with God, and as long as with you are in one accord with yourself, you, you are determined. Nehemiah was determined. He gained the strength to, to get back there. So beware of the discouragers. But as long as God approves of it, as long as your heart has sent you to do it, may God enable you, may God help you to accomplish what you are doing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. One other thing that actually we find about Nehemiah, of course, we cannot exhaust him, but just speaking a few things that he encourages and shows the importance of working together. The reason why we read at one moment, actually, he gathered the people. Now, there is strength in unity. There is strength in working together. And he considered the urgency of the work to be accomplished. Urgency. Sometimes we begin our projects and we, they, they, they fail along the way. They trail along the way. They slow down along the way. But Nehemiah had the agency of this project. And the Bible said actually it was completed. The wall was completed and re rebuilt in 52 days in the midst of plots, in the midst of, you know, sabotage. But he continued and finished the work. And so I pray for you that you will start work and complete it. One of, the, one, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, of course, the entire Bible is favorite to me. But it says, I am confident, Paul tells the Philippians, I am confident that he who has started this good work in you will bring it to accomplishment. And so may God help us to accomplish what we start. Those whose houses, those whose projects have stalled, may God enable you. Like he enabled Nehemiah to finish his projects, never stalled. In 52 days, he completed. And so he was a team leader. That's very, very big attribute. So he knew what was needed to be done and at that time. So see the need, see the agency. And then after seeing the agency of the work, you yourself be an encourager. Stand out and get into the work. In chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, or following, following, you read and find out that Nehemiah was a great man. So the emphasis is work must be completed. Start and finish. Start and finish your work. Praise the Lord. Start and finish. Don't be overtaken by the discouragers. Don't be discouraged by the discouragers. Those who plot, the Sanibalats and the Tobias. And as I speak to you, I'm speaking to myself. There are some people who have abandoned. But of course, actually, um, as we stick there, of course, sometimes it can be, be, be get dangerous. There are some people who plot not to finish, that you should not finish, but they want to harm you. The reason why Nehemiah secured guards that they were working with one hand, a brick in one hand, but a sword in another. So you need to be also security conscious that you are not hurt, that you are not harmed by the people that plot. Because some others kill, some others will do anything. But may God give you the insight, may God give you the wisdom, so that you are able to stand out, start the work completely, but also being conscious that actually your aware of fear is guaranteed. So ask God to give you the wisdom as you continue with your project, as you continue working. And as I turn towards the finish now, Nehemiah shows us that as we work, work progresses. But as it progresses, we need a spiritual revival as well. We need to be mindful of the spirit. Now, whatever Nehemiah was doing, of course, actually, I, did, I forgot to mention that he's, he was the governor. He was the political leader. He came from the, the, the king's palace. He, he was, but spiritual as well. And so he works together with the church, with, I mean, with the believer, with the priest. And the priest at that time was Ezra. Ezra, the man, and I know you know that actually he was. And so Ezra brought about spiritual revival. And this is something that I want to finish up with because you need it, I need it. Spiritual revival. And in chapter 8, the Bible says that actually work being done and completed and all the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate and that's in Nehemiah chapter 8 and they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel and so Ezra the priest stood 
brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they had on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning till midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of the people were attentive to the book of the law. Praise the Lord. And so we need this. That actually we do physical, economic development, but also the spiritual. Now, this chapter 8, I dedicate it to you. You read it and see what ne Ezra did as a priest, as a scribe. And so we need a spiritual revival during our time. Many walls are broken in our family. Many walls are broken in our, in our country. Many walls have broken even the church. Many, many things have not gone right. We need the spiritual revival in it. We need it. We need it. And so Nehemiah gives us uh, an example of leadership. We need leaders. Leadership is beautiful, remember. It's a beautiful thing. Leadership is a combination of character, competence, care, and sacrifice. Can I repeat that as I finish this? That leadership is a beautiful combination of character, competence, care, and sacrifice. So give time and resources. So may God who started this good work, who enabled Nehemiah, also enable you. And may he enable me. May he endow us with a spirit of commitment and determination. And we offer leadership in all spheres of life, what you are, where you are, wherever you are, and how you are. May God enable you like he was with Nehemiah. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.